Building three days in a row this week. That's the first for you. Is it four days? Four days. Four days. Good. Okay. So let's start with the warm up real quick. Um, so we're continuing off of what we did yesterday, right? So yesterday we started off with combining like terms. Okay, we identified them. Uh, we figured out what a like term meant, and then we moved on to adding polynomials together, right? So we're going to backtrack a little bit. Okay. So we're going to backtrack a little bit and go back to combining like terms, and then again we'll move forward to adding our polynomials together. So again, just like everything. Um, our objectives on the board, so add polynomials with two variables and multiple degrees. So that's kind of uh, what you should be able to do by the end of today. Okay, so let's review combining like terms. Okay, um, notice I underlined the word like. Okay, so who thinks they remember from yesterday what it meant to be a like term? Raise your hand. You think you know. <clears throat> two people, three people, four people, that's better. Sean, what do you remember from yesterday? What's a like term? Same variable with the same exponent. Same variable, same exponent, right? So let me ask you this, Jennifer, okay, uh, what did you circle here for your like terms? Or what did you pick for your like terms? 4x and negative 2x. The 4x and the negative 2x, very good. If you remember from yesterday, we circled them to identify them, right? And so why did you pick those two? Because they have the same variable and an exponent. They have the same variable, right? They both have an x. What's my exponent here, right? Because I don't see one after the x. It's one, okay, so there's an understood one because anything raised to the first power is itself. Very good, okay? So we've identified our like terms. Now we've got to follow directions, right? We've got to combine them. So when it says combine, what does it mean to do with them? Put them together. Put them together by doing what? Adding, Adding them, subtracting them, right? So I have four x's plus a negative two x. That's like saying I have four x's and I lost two of them. Well, how many x's do I have left? Two x's, right? Okay, so we combine these two. So I'm going to cross them out. We combine those, and then now became... 2x. Okay, and then we didn't stop there, right? We rewrote our polynomial. Okay, so how do I start rewriting this polynomial? What's going to come first? The biggest exponent, right? We call that a leading term. So which one has the largest exponent? 6x squared. 6x squared, so that's going to come first, right? So let's just rewrite our polynomial. So 6x squared plus what's going to come next? 2x. 2x. Why'd you pick 2x? Right, so we're just going in descending order, so 2, and then that one has a 1, so 1, okay? So plus 2x, okay? So we've used that one, we've used that one. What's next? Negative 2y. Negative 2y, good. Can you send Carlos to Vincia to the counselor's office? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, and then last but not least, what, what can we not forget? Seven. The plus 7, seven. Seven. okay? And we had a special name for that plus 7. Who remembers what that special name was? A constant. Aiden, why is it a constant? What's different from the 7 to this x, the 6x squared, and this 2x? Variable. It doesn't have a variable, right? So there's no variable attached to it. So anytime we have a constant, when we rewrite it, it's going to be added on or subtracted on to the end. Very good. Okay, so this would be my final answer. We can circle it. And what I always like to do, okay, and you should probably do it before you circle your final answer, right? But look back over and make sure, hey, is there anything else can, I can combine? Do I have any other like terms I can put together? And I don't see any, right? So that'll be our final answer. Okay? So coming back to you from yesterday. Yes, no. Maybe the CC had not. Okay. Uh, number two. Let's have Gavin. Gavin, what'd you get for your like terms here? What'd you circle? Uh, negative five y cubed and y cubed. Okay, so y cubed. What else did you say? And 5 y cubed. Okay, why'd you pick those two? Because they have the same exponent. They have the same exponent. Okay, that's true. But what else does it take to have or to be a like term? Yeah, same, variable. same variable. Okay, and they both have a y. I didn't try to trick you here and throw an x in there. Okay, very good. Okay, now when I add these together, right, because we're going to combine them. So I have 5 y cubed plus y cubed. What'd you get, Gavin? Oh, uh, 6 y cubed. 6 y cubed. Very good. Notice, okay. Why is it not 6 y to the 6? Okay, because I had some people trying to do that earlier, right? So they took these two, they knew they were like terms.
Okay, and when they added them, they added the exponents. But what are we actually adding? We talked about it yesterday. It's that number before the variable. What do we call that? Coefficient. The coefficient, right? So we're not adding our variables together. We're adding our coefficients. Very good. And you even knew that in front of that y cubed was an understood what? One. One. Okay, because it's not written yet. Very good. Okay, so we have six y cubed in front of the variable yet. Okay. Now what? We're going to rewrite it in the correct order. So what comes next? What do you think, Kaylee? 6y cubed. Okay, so 6y cubed comes first. Then what? 2y squared. 2y squared. Why is it 2y squared? Because that's from Are you waiting to sharpen your pen? I'm just been waiting. Go ahead. Second highest exponent. I don't want to play well. Second highest exponent. Good. So the second highest exponent. So 2y squared. Okay, so we use that one. Cancels. Okay, then what? 6y. 6y. Very good. Because that's a variable. Very good. Then what? And the minus 3, right? We can't forget about our little old constant, okay? And that would be our final answer. Again, we could go over it, double check and make sure, hey, can I combine anything else in my answer? Well, I have a y cubed and a y squared, can't combine those, right? I've got a y squared and a y, can't combine those, and then I can't add my constant with it. So that would be our final answer, okay? Very good. If you put your warm-up away, get out your journal. If you do not have your journal, you forgot to bring it today, Okay, you lost it, any kind of case like that, just use a sheet of paper. So get out your journal. At the top of your page, right, 4.1, we're in section, chapter 4, section 1. You can write 4.1. We're going to do a few example problems before I let you loose on our activity of the day. So we just practiced in our warm-up combining like terms, right? So we were given one polynomial, and we just combined like terms within it. We identified it, then we put them together by adding them or subtracting them. Okay, what we're going to do now is take that, and we're going to add two polynomials, okay? So we'll have a polynomial then another polynomial, and then we'll just add them together, okay? So just like what we did towards the end of class yesterday with our like last two problems. Um, so we're going to start back with that. So our first example we're going to use. Uh, our first polynomial is x squared plus 2x minus 6. And then plus our second polynomial is going to be 3x cubed plus 3. Okay, just to review a little bit of a polynomial, right? Um, this would be our polynomial. It's grouped together by our parentheses. It's split up into terms, right? So those were split up by um, our addition and subtraction signs. We had um, our leading term is our term with the uh, highest exponent, right? Okay, and so when we talked about adding two polynomials together, I showed you two ways. There's probably more than two ways, um, but I showed you the two I like the most. Okay, the first way was, if you will, like grouping our like terms together, right? So we took our x squareds and we circled all of our x squareds, right? So I circled that x squared. Now I'm looking at my other two polynomials. Do I see any more x squareds? No. No, so I'm not going to circle anything else, right? And then let's say we took our two x's and we boxed them. So we put a box around this. Do I have any more x's? No. Nothing else to box. Okay. Then I had this minus 6. Okay, what do we call that again? There's no variable. A constant. And let's say we underline our constants. Do I have any more constants to underline? Plus three. The plus three, right? So we underline those. And then what's left, okay, is a 3x cubed. We could put a shape around it. We don't have to because that's all that's left. Let's put a triangle around it, though, just so, okay, it looks better, more pleasing <coughs> to the eye. Okay, so all we've done now is we took our like, our like terms and we kind of grouped them together and identifying them with shapes, right? And so when we added our polynomials, we knew, hey, I can add my circles together, right? I can add my boxes together. I can add my underlines together. So let's do that now. Okay, let's start with our circles, right? It comes first right there. So again, this works because we're adding polynomials. When we get to subtracting, it'll be a little bit different. Um, but we're adding them. So let's start with our circle. X squared. Do I have any other circles to add that to? No. no. No, so we can just rewrite that as X squared. All right? So X squared. Now let's do my boxes. 
Okay? I see a 2x. Can I add that 2x to anything else? Do I see another box? Is there any other term like the 2x? No. So we can just rewrite that one. So plus 2x. So we use that one. Then I have this minus 6. Okay, it's underlined. Is there anything else I can combine the underlined with? The plus 3, right? So now we have negative 6 plus 3. What is that? Positive 6. Oh, here's some different answers. Who thinks it's negative 3? Who thinks it's positive 3? Okay, maybe everybody said negative 3. Good, so minus 3. We might need to practice some adding and subtracting with integers. Okay, and then I have this triangle, that's all that's left. So plus 3x cubed. And am I going to leave my answer like this? No. No, no what am I going to do? Change 3x cubed to the plus. Well, why'd you do that? Higher right, it's my leading term, it has to be highest exponent, so we're going to put that in the front. So we're going to rearrange this thing, right? So 3x cubed comes first, then what? x squared. x squared, why'd you pick that one next, Preston? Because it's got the second highest exponent. Okay, so we're going in descending order, right? So plus x squared, okay? Then what? Plus 2x. Plus 2x, then what? Minus 3. Minus 3. And then again, I can double check it. Hey, is there anything else I can combine? No. That would be my answer. Very good. So that was the first way we looked at it. The second way was more traditional, right? We added them vertically. So just like what you did in, I don't know, fifth grade, fourth grade, and we took 359 plus 223, right? And then we grouped them by, hey, all of our ones are going to line up together, all of our tens, all of our hundreds, right? So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to line them up vertically by our like terms. Okay, so let's do that now. So I'm going to rewrite my, um, my problem. So x squared plus 2x minus 6, this is my first polynomial, plus 3x cubed plus 3. Okay, so I have my two polynomials that I'm going to, that I'm going to add together. Okay, and what I like to do, again, you can add in any order, right? 4 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 4. I could add these in any order, but I like to stick my polynomial with the most terms on top. So notice, this one has 3 terms, this one has 2. Okay, so I'm going to put the one with 3 on top. So, x squared plus 2x minus 6. Just rewrote my first polynomial. Okay, and then we're going to add them vertically like we would have done here. Okay, so plus, and I'm going to stick my second polynomial underneath it. Now, this is where you got to be careful, right? So just like here, where we put our ones together, our tens together, and our hundreds together, we're going to do the same thing here with our like terms. Okay, so you got to be a little careful. So where am I going to stick this 3x cubed? Because I don't see an x cubed up here, right? So where's it going to go? We can put it in front, right? Good, I like that. So we're going to put it in front. Because we're not going to put it under the x squared, right? They're not like terms. We're not going to put it under the x squared. We're not going to put it under the 2x or the 6. So let's put it up front. So 3x cubed. Good idea. Okay. And then all that's left is to put that 3 somewhere. Where am I going to put that 3? Under, Under the negative 6. Why would you pick that, Jennifer? Because they're the same. What's the same about it? They're what? Same variable. There's no variable, which we call what? Constant. Constant, right? So we're going to stick our constants over each other. Good. So plus 3 back here. Now, I don't know about you, okay, but these spaces here look kind of funky to me, right? I don't like those spaces. You don't have to do this. I'd probably encourage it, or just because I'm familiar with it. But, okay, I don't like that space. So where there's a 2x, I know here there's no x's. So I'm going to put a plus 0x. That's not going to change my answer, right? Anytime I add 0 to anything, it's not going to change it. But it makes this look uh, more pleasing to the eye, okay? And so just like the x squared here, there's nothing underneath it. There was no x squared in this polynomial. I'm going to put a plus 0x squared. And just like in this one, there's no x cubed. I'm going to put a plus 0x cubed in that spot. 